What kind of job do you want when you grow up? How about making tents for a living? Let's talk about it. Hey kids and people of faith, it's Pastor Chad. Hey, um, when I was a kid, I dreamed of being two different things, having two different jobs when I grew up. I dreamed of being an architect and a forest ranger. Man, those are two very different jobs. I know, but that's what I wanted to be. That's what kind of job I wanted when I was younger. And I never dreamed I would be here with you uh, as a pastor. But today in our message, I want you to understand that sometimes people can start out wanting to do one thing and end up doing another because we're going to see three people who made tents for a living. And they may not have believed that they were going to do that for a living when they were younger, but God used their talents and ability to make tents and also tell others about Jesus. We're going to see Paul, Aquila, and his wife Priscilla. All three of them made tents for a living, but they also had time to tell others about Jesus. And you know, sometimes people think that Pastor Adams and I, being that we're full-time in ministry, that we're pastors, that somehow only Pastor Adams and I can tell others about Jesus, that's actually not true at all. Everybody, no matter what they do, no matter what job that they have, they can also take time to tell others about Jesus, even people in retirement. Hey, so in Acts 18, one to three, uh, it says this, after this, Paul left Athens and he went to Corinth, the city of Corinth. And he found a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because the emperor, it says, the emperor of Rome, the Roman big guy, Claudius, had commanded all the Jewish people had to leave Rome. So when people left Rome, they went other places. And so Aquila and Priscilla ended up in the same city of, of, that Paul was in, in Corinth. And then it ends with, and he, that is, he went to see them, Paul went to see Priscilla and Aquila, and because he was of the same trade, that is the same job, he stayed with them and worked, for they were tent makers by trade. All three of them had the same kind of job. They made tents. And then it also says, even though Paul was doing his job, he also had time to tell others about Jesus because it says, and he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and tried to persuade the Jews and the Greeks. Have you ever stayed in a tent? Maybe you were camping or maybe you had a sleepover at your house with your friends. Tent making was a very good job. Back in the Bible times, you could make good money and people needed tents. In fact, when soldiers went off to war and they marched from place to place, they literally had to have thousands and thousands of tents to stay in. Tents made great temporary houses because you can move them from place to place. In fact, in the Bible, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob lived in tents. And for 40 years, when the people of Israel uh, left Egypt in the Exodus, they wandered around in the wilderness and they lived in tents. So tents have been around for thousands of years. People traveled and they needed tents to stay in. And especially if you were a nomad or a Bedouin and you lived in the desert, you needed a tent to live in. You had to have a tent. So you can see why tents were needed in Bible times. Even today, about $470 million worth of tents are, are sold every year. So people still use tents. And young Jewish boys like Paul and Aquila, well, they would learn a trade when they were young. Their dad or someone would teach them a trade so they could make a living when they grew up. But 
uh, here in our text, we see that Paul and Aquila and Priscilla made tents, and tents back then were made out of mostly black goat's hair. Black goat's hair. That's right. And you would cut those strips of cloth, sew them together, and then you'd need poles to hold up the middle of the tent so it, per, so it came to a peak. And then you'd have ropes and pegs that kept the tent secure into the ground so the wind wouldn't blow it away. And what's really cool is Paul could do his job with simple tools moving from place to place. You know what Paul needed? He needed three basic things. He needed a sharp knife. He needed an awl, A-W-L, awl. And he needed basically a curved needle, a strong curved needle so that he could uh, make his way through the material, the cloth, or sometimes even leather. Well, again, Paul tells us in the Bible, this is how he lived. This is how he made a living. Uh, some places in the Bible, it says, Paul worked with his own hands. Often, it says, harder than anyone else. It says in the Bible, he worked night and day so that no one uh, would be burdened by him. It also says that he worked with his own hands and supplied his own needs and the needs of anybody that was with him. And then he says, finally, in the Bible, in everything I did, I showed you that by this kind of hard work, we must help others. The Bible is very clear. God gives us jobs so that we can provide for ourselves and our families and the people we care about. Jobs are not bad things, they're good things. In fact, the Bible says that whatever we do, we're supposed to work as for the Lord and not for men. You're serving the Lord Christ. That's Colossians 3, 23 and 24. So what kind of job do you want when you grow up? Well, after hearing this about Paul and Priscilla and Aquila, remember, Remember this, whatever job you have, whatever job you want to do, you can still find time to tell others about Jesus, just like Paul and Aquila and Priscilla. I'll see you next time. a nice young man. Is he single? Because if he's single, I can set him up with one of the ladies at the Goat Hair Sewing Guild. Do you know all those people were going to be out there watching us? I can't believe you let me go out there. I didn't have any makeup on. I wouldn't have worn that dress. Why would you let me go out there knowing all those people were out there? Did you go to the market like I asked you to today? I hope you did, because when we get home, I'm going to need you to fix the wagon wheel and my carriage and the gate out back is squeaking again. I'm going to need you to work on that. And when we get back, and after that, I have a few things that I want you to do inside. Are you listening to me? Yes, dear.